Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Does XRP have legal clarity? I, was it just some sort of dream that I had? Because I, I woke up today, like I think I've been doing for over two months now, with the understanding that XRP has legal clarity. Did I just make that up in my own head, or did that happen? It happened, right? Well, there's a regulator that uh, doesn't seem to give a damn about that. <laughs> You look at this headline from the Crypto Basic. New York regulator removes XRP from green list. Ripple payments license not affected. And so this, this news broke the other day. Uh, I was on a day where I actually happened to have taken, uh, I took the day off from publishing anything on YouTube, but uh, I, I, was, I was still following the news. And so I've been looking forward to touching on this one. So I'm sure some of you have heard, but uh, if not, like, how does this happen? <laughs> and it's just, it's just the state of New York. What is the thinking here? Because honestly, I mean, I'll share with you everything that I do know to this point, but it's weird and I can't find an actual rationale. If there's an explanation for any of this anywhere on Tobabernets, uh, I haven't seen it. And it is possible I just missed information, but I checked multiple stories on this and everybody's reporting that this is, is something that happened, but nobody knows why, so far as I'm aware anyway. So actually, if, you, if any, I'm not a know-it-all, so if you, any of you listening do know, because maybe I did miss something, let me know. But I, I checked tons of stories on this, and I, I just couldn't freaking find it. Oh, uh, and also I wanted to share with you, I'll share a chart a little bit later in the video, but uh, XRP has become the most traded uh, cryptocurrency in the United States on US-based exchanges. How about that? Wasn't it supposed to go to zero and be knocked out of the top 10 cryptos by market cap? Wasn't that all supposed to happen? Well, it didn't. <laughs> XRP ain't going nowhere, son, despite uh, what, what the regulators in New York uh, would, would prefer. And it just, it just kind of, it's, it's a head scratch. I, before going further, though, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so let's jump into it. The New York Department of Financial Services, uh, NYDFS for short, has updated its list of approved tokens for custody and listing. <clears throat> According to a report yesterday by Fortune, the DFS removed over two dozen crypto assets from the list, with XRP included. Aside from XRP, the DFS removed other top crypto assets from the green list, including Doge and Litecoin. The regulator's green list has been trimmed to support only eight crypto assets, including Bitcoin, ETH, and PayPal dollar. <laughs> PayPal dollar? That, that, that's cool with them. But, but XRP, one of the most useful cryptos on the entire planet. Uh, nope. <laughs> what? Peace continues. <clears throat> the recent development is part of efforts made by the DFS to update its virtual currency and oversight regime for the crypto sector. And for context... The token green list was created by the DFS regulator for crypto supervision purposes. Previously, DFS license holders had the approval to list and custody tokens on the green list using a self-certification system. Once two DFS license holders self-certify a token for listing or custody, the crypto asset would be automatically added to the green list. Although tokens could be added to the green list using the self-certification system, the DFS still supervised the process. In its new guidance, the DDFS said it's, it has updated its token green list, trimming the, the list of approved tokens to only eight. Uh, notably, XRP joined the list of crypto assets removed from the list. And I'm not going to read them. For those of you who care to look, there's the, the list of them on your screen. There's the eight of them. Um, expectedly, the development stirred reactions from crypto community members, especially enthusiasts of XRP. Reacting, prominent XRP influencer Wrath of Kahneman took to the X platform to clarify that the recent development has nothing to do with Ripple. Wrath of Kahneman, who first described the Fortune post as petty due to the headline, clarified that the development does not imply that Ripple or any of its entities have lost its payment, uh, payments license in New York. He noted that the development indicates that NYDFS's license holders may only custody digital assets on the green list. However, XRP was removed from the list. So again, I don't know why. I haven't seen an explanation. But how does this happen after XRP has legal clarity? I just, I do not get it. Now, there was a post from Attorney John Deaton on this. Here's what he had to say. After it was determined not to be a security, it's not even a security if Ripple sells it on exchanges. 
yeah, this move isn't political or punitive in nature. And so obviously, a uh, very clear sarcasm from Attorney Deaton there. He says, because again, he said, not political or punitive, when obviously it's both. But why? And so, and by the way, the individual that, um, that, that launched this news, this press release from NYDFS, uh, her name is, uh, it was Adrian, well, let me go a little bit lower, maybe it's probably right somewhere around here in the articles, like Adrian Harris, was that what the name was? Um, I think that's right. Well, either, well, maybe it's not in this particular article. I read a bunch of articles on this stuff. It doesn't particularly matter. It's actually cited here, too. It was, uh, yeah, Adrian Harris. That That's her name. Um, so check this out, though. This is kind of interesting. XRP community member Stefan Huber, goes by Mr. Huber on, uh, on X, responded to that post from attorney Deaton, and he wrote, another Sullivan and Cromwell Muppet. And so you may recall that Sullivan and Cromwell, that's the firm that Jay Clayton worked at, uh, but before uh, moving over to the SEC, and I can't remember, he may have gone back afterwards, too. I, I don't recall for sure, but it doesn't matter. The point is, it's, a, it's another uh, attorney, Sol Sullivan and Cromwell, and highlighted, and so it looks like this is, I'm assuming this was just ripped from, from LinkedIn. Um, this is a screen grab showing work history here, but you can see where I'm circling here at the bottom here. I'm make this full screen for a second. There you go. Associate Sullivan and Cromwell from 2008 to 2013. But it also gets a little bit more peculiar because, and so again, she's the one that uh, put out this press release. So I don't know if it's, uh, you know, her that, that, that decided that this would be the case or if she's just reporting it. I don't know if there's a team of people that decided what to do. Presumably it would be more than just a unilateral decision from one, one person working there. Um, but I don't know structurally how this works. I haven't seen that reported anywhere either. But it's, it's, it gets more interesting because uh, for those of you looking at your screen, you, can, you might be scratching your head on this one too. Um, there's an article from Ripple's blog series, Ripple Insights, and that's a picture of Adrian Harris. And this is from August 19th, 2020. This is titled, How Does DLT Engender, uh, creator, uh, Engender Greater Financial Inclusion? And so they have this article, and they, they do cite her. They do cite her. That's where I, I went to get her name a second ago, Adrian Harris. But there's no explanation of why she's particularly associated with Ripple here. And I, I read this whole thing. So I don't think that she was like working at Ripple or anything like that. It's 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 just an obvious question that anybody reading this would have. Okay, so who is this woman? And this is from a few years ago. But there's some sort of Ripple connection there. But she also worked at Sullivan and Cromwell. So I don't know. It just seems kind of peculiar. Uh, now, the good news is, as far as what this means for XRP, like nobody gives a damn in the end, right? I mean, if you're in New York, yes, if, it's, if it structurally changes the way you want to go about functioning your business, totally got that. But big picture in terms of whether or not XRP is going to moon or anything along those lines, no. New York is ridiculous when it comes to crypto. Uh, but no, you're not going to stop XRP. You're definitely not going to stop XRP, but I don't understand why there's this, it seems like an attack on XRP, does it not? I've seen enough crap like this. I just, I don't know why it is. So, of course, that's why, you know, when Stefan Huber was sharing what he shared, which, again, I assume is just a LinkedIn gra screen grab, I think the the question, the underlying question might be then, uh, because you can go back to the whole ETHgate thing, not that I want to get into that particular in this video, but uh, is, is there... <laughs> Is there is there a personal motivator here? I guess that would be the polite way to to ask the question, right? Would there be a, would there be a personal motivator? But again, to my point, um, you know, you're never going to be able to stop XRP. Look, XRP do, does now have legal clarity, and so take a look at this. Somebody on X shared the following post: XRP has overtaken Solana as the most traded alt on U.S. available exchanges this year. Now, that is something here, and here's the other thing full screen for just a second here. Now, that's something, um, because, I know, I, so obviously, in terms of volume, this and that, um, XRP is probably not off. I wouldn't think that it's particularly off compared to even right before the settlement broke. Uh, the, or not settlement, but the, um, rather, the um, J Judge Torres conclusion, uh, it, as it pertains specifically to XRP. Even if you go back to, like, July 12th or a little bit earlier than that, volume for XRP has been fairly consistent, um, but it's just fascinating. Apparently, <laughs> the indication here is that after the news dropped a couple months ago, XRP is, 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 has, has, I mean, this is the narrative that it's, it's hopped over Solana as a result of this. And so there's another individual here named Boris Allergent who wrote, XRP has traded more than Solana in 2023 in the U.S., but has only been relisted by those exchanges since mid-July. 
The cumulative volume of XRP in two months has been more than that of Solana in nine months. So, so I guess the point would be overall volume. It is what it is. I haven't seen anything particularly diff different, but as it pertains specifically what's happened in the United States, uh, once the exchange has relisted it, psh, shot right on past it. That's incredible. That happened fast in, in two months, in just two months overtook. So that's why I'll, and I, you know, I've been saying this a lot lately, and I just I, I couldn't more seriously mean this. When we end up in euphoria again, which I think is an inevitability, when Bitcoin leads uh, to, you know, jumping up to new high, XRP is going to play. It's, 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 it is going to run. I firmly believe that to be the case. Maybe I'm wrong and it goes to zero. I always acknowledge that. But uh, now that it's unshackled here, I mean, this is just this is one little metric here. And I think it's just a hint about what's to come. XRP will melt faces. And I don't care what they're doing in New York. They ain't going to stop it. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.